So we've got our model of a four-wheel drive here. We've got the front differential, centre differential, that's locked out, doesn't um, affect anything here, and the rear differential. I'm only going to focus on the rear axle for the purposes of explaining what brake traction control is. So I'll start the model up, and there's equal resistance with the left and the right wheels, and the differential always equalises the amount of torque or turning force that will go to either axle either wheel there so both wheels always get exactly the same amount of torque now if I introduce some resistance here make this wheel harder to turn by putting this or the wood against it what happens happened there is that I've made this wheel harder to turn um, so that wheel is now easier to turn and it takes very little turning force to just rotate that wheel around in the air but the amount of turning force or torque that wheel takes is as much as gets applied to this wheel over here and if we were off-road then this wheel could be up against a rock or rut or something like that going nowhere that wheel could be perhaps in the air or with low traction and just uselessly spinning so what brake traction control does it detects the computers detect the relative speed of wheels on an axle and computers would say well hang on this wheel is spinning very fast and this wheel is not moving at all therefore we're probably stuck and it would also take into account things like the engine speed, the throttle position, the speed of the front wheels, a few other things there but basically the main input is how fast this wheel is travelling that wheel. So the computers will go there's something wrong here this is going too fast relative to that and what the computers then do is then they start to apply the brakes to that wheel. I'm going to do that in effect with my finger here and start to slow that and you can see that the other wheel starts to move. Now what's happening there is I've made this wheel harder to turn so I have increased the torque required for this wheel to move and because of that, because the differential equalises the amount of torque then because more torque is required on this wheel then more torque gets sent to that wheel and then that's enough to overcome the resistance of the block of wood here. And you'll see that in the video clip shortly you see a wheel spin, the computers will break that wheel and then the other wheel will continue to turn and that's typically the wheel retraction. That's how brake traction control works and this is what it's called. Every manufacturer seems to have a different name for it. So for example, Toyota call it ATRC for Active Traction Control, Land Rover ETC, that pretty generic name, Electronic Traction Control, Nissan, Nissan call it TCS, Traction Control System, and Jeep call it BLD for a brake lock differential. And it's usually some combination of traction and electronics. So 
When you see all sorts of weird and wonderful acronyms for manufacturers, they generally refer to the same technology. They just like to dress it up in different marketing names. Now let's run through some myths about brake traction control. And the first one is that it, it slows you down. And that's not been my experience. So I've been testing vehicles with traction control and driving them and owning them for the best part of 20 years now. I can't remember how many I've driven, but it would be over a hundred in all sorts of different conditions and I have not found this at all. Uh, the re reason is that the brake traction control waits for a wheel to spin and then it breaks that wheel only. It doesn't break any wheel which is still continuing to rotate at the speed that, that, that it should be. I think that when people say this they're getting confused with the other types of electronic systems such as stability control and that absolutely does slow you down or engine traction control which cuts the throttle and, and they are related to but not the same as brake traction control. Now second it wears out the brakes because it's supplying the brake it wears out well yes there it does use the brakes but the degree of brake wear is really insignificant because what wears out the brakes is really the amount of energy being dissipated through them. And I've got a video on, on the i30N and um, how much energy is dissipated use, using brakes there. And if you're taking a full drive, let's say three turns, you're slowing it down from, I don't know, 80 to 40 kilometers an hour. That, that's a lot of energy you, you are dissipating there. But if you've just got a wheel which is rotating and that wheel only weighs, you know, I don't know, 20, 40 kilos or something like that, and you're slowing it down a bit, it's not really much energy. So, so, so it's not really going to overheat or, or um, overdo your brakes to any great degree. And again, it doesn't really overheat the, the brakes. Um, not really seen evidence of, of that. What overheats your brakes is coming down a hill without low range or, or, or in neutral. That, that will definitely do it. Now, there's one exception to this, and that's the older Pajeros, Mitsubishi Pajeros. They were notorious for having their electronic traction control system overheat and um, cut out. And that's why it was better to use a locker when you were doing really long climbs and talking over a minute or more. But that's the only vehicle in the only circumstance I've ever seen electronic traction control give up. And Mitsubishi has since fixed that in, in the later models. And people going, oh, it's no good, just electronics, don't really know. Well, look, I mean, it was useful back in 1999 or mid-90s when this thing was, was first invented. But now in 2020, it, it's way, way better than it was 20 years ago. And, um, and you know, to, to say that it's no good off-road is, is just flying in the face of all available evidence. The latest systems on the Prado 150, Toyota 200 series, Land Rovers are just, just incredible. And they're very nearly getting up there with cross-axle differential locks for, for straight line straight line wheels in the air climbs so let's talk about brake traction control versus locking differentials which is best so with your brake traction control it requires no driver input at all you simply drive the car and the electronics work things out for you automatically and that's um, that that's generally a good thing there are specific techniques around that I'll probably do another video on driving with brake traction control it allows full steering input and it improves the turn because it doesn't change the action of the differential. It still allows the inside wheel to turn slower than the outside wheel. And if you're sending, in effect, more torque to the outside wheel, that can actually help get you around the turn better than if you were just driving with an open um, diff with no brake traction control. And what, let's say the outside wheel was against a rock or something like that. You're not going anywhere. Brake traction control would help pull you around. And it works on all four wheels. Now this is important. There's many vehicles out there which have a rear locker only, but they have very effective traction control. And for many of those vehicles, it's actually better to engage the traction control, or rather uh, not engage the rear locker, which probably doesn't have traction control working on the front axle when you put the rear locker in. You're better off using traction control, which works on all four wheels to pull you through than putting the rear locker in to, um, to to just have traction going on the rear axle. The exception to that would be in very rocky terrain when you've got excellent traction on the back axle and you've got massive wheel lift, then it'd probably be better to put the rear locker in. But any time when you really need diagonal wheels pulling you, you forwards, then I'd go for a good traction control system over a rear locker every time. Twin locker um, equation changes again. 
Now it's reactive and that means it, it actually has to wait for a wheel to spin and then it comes in and that's a criticism leveled at it very often and that's increasingly less true again you look at the very latest systems Toyota and Land Rover are the two best in, in my view and you'll see that it's it's so quick and it's so effective it's it's reactive but it's almost uh, a, a moot point with the, with the latest systems not like it was uh, you know 20 years ago and um, Ford PX range is pretty pretty slow the so Toyota and Land Cruiser are the best and it's standard on almost four by almost all four by fours it's part of the stability control system so which is mandated pretty much worldwide now in all, in all developed countries so you just got it don't need to buy anything don't need to do anything now cross axle differential lockers so they require driver input so you've got to engage them or disengage them and even if you've got automatic lockers mechanical automatic lockers which I really don't like then they require different driving styles so yeah um, definitely requires driver input which not necessarily a bad thing but for a beginner um, or in the heat of the moment um, not ideal definitely limit steering with a rear, with a rear locker in your, your steering is limited front locker in even more both even more again there's no question about that and and that's and you, you actually need more engine power to turn in a circle when you've got your, your lockers in and there's more drag and it's just problematic so brake traction control works well in sand for example um, lockers not so much because you, you tend just to slip sideways and anytime you turn then, then, then there's much extra, a lot of extra drag and many vehicles only have one locker and therefore it's only working on one axle now you can obviously have twin locked vehicles and there's a few of them stock standard such as the lc79 and the rubicon but generally um, with most stock vehicles there are just a lock on the rear axle now it's proactive so so that's important so it doesn't need to wait for the wheel to spin um, it, it's already locked and, and that's a bonus when you're doing really rocky hill climbs and so it's it's pretty rare standard i mean not all vehicles have cross axle lockers um and therefore it's it's potentially more expensive if you need to fit it aftermarket or go to a twin lock system so the thing is use both they're complementary i like to have both most of the time i can just use brake traction control but there's some occasions when you definitely want a locker and you can see my nissan navara np300 review the example in there where i'm using one or the other now traction control is a broad term and there's three different types so you've got your engine traction control and what that does the computers look at wheel spin and go all right you've got too much throttle on wheels are spinning we're just going to back off the throttle for you the car isn't necessarily sliding anywhere but it's got excess wheel spin on uh, two or more wheels and the way to fix that the only way to fix that is to, is to cut the engine power now you do not want this off-road because you often want a lot of wheel slip off-road when you're going through mud or sand or, or deep loose loose surfaces and sometimes uh, even on rock but most vehicles 4x4 vehicles disable this mode this program in the off-road modes for example when you have a center diff locked or in low range then there's electronic stability control and that breaks individual wheels to keep the car from sliding so basically prevents excess understeer or oversteer keeps the car going where you want it to be pointed again that's not good off-road because you are going to have quite a bit of slip and sliding naturally with electronic stability control that's uh, off off-road and esc will get in the way of that and it will break individual wheels and it will also cut the throttle and it will kill your progress so you don't want that but again that can be disabled and typically that is disabled or at least very much desensitized when things like center diffs are locked and finally brake traction control which is what this video is about that breaks an individual spinning wheel to send more torque in effect to the wheel on the other end of the axle so the vehicle can move it actually equalizes torque on both wheels on an axle but the effect is you get more torque to the wheel which has traction and that is good off-road and that's what we're talking about here so thank you for watching subscribe to this channel and follow me on facebook for more 4x4 towing and car content if you've got any questions please put them into the comments and uh, watch out for more videos on this sort of subject